The world is currently facing is a major pandemic, and this is not a pandemic of, that is going to go away at the end of 2020. Right now in South Africa, we're still sort of at the start of the first wave of the pandemic. And in all likelihood, we will continue experiencing waves of this pandemic until at least about 60 to 70 percent of the population become infected. Now, with this virus, what we've been able to calculate is that for every one person that's infected, in the absence of anyone else being immune against the virus, uh, that person will infect about two to three other people. And those two to three other people will go on to infect another two to three other people. And over 15 cycles, that number goes almost into the thousands. Right? And that's the reason why we're sitting right now with close to five million people have been infected. And in fact, that number is actually more because those are only the numbers that we actually know about. So the number of people that have truly been infected probably is probably as much as 10 times higher than the 5 million that we know about that have been tested. Now, to be able to actually interrupt that sort of chain of transmission, what we need to do is we need to have a, large percent, a larger percentage of the population become immune against the virus sooner, right? And the way to do that is with the vaccine. So once a large percentage of the population, and for this particular virus is estimated at about 60 to 70 percent of the population, once 60 to 70 percent of the population have developed some sort of immunity against the virus, then when one person becomes infected, that person is very unlikely to infect more than one other person. In fact, won't, inf won't infect more than one other person. So there's something what we call an effective reproductive rate, which means that for every new, in new infection, how many additional case infections are going to occur from that new infection. And we want that effective reproductive rate to be less than one. So the, va the vaccine provides us that sort of opportunity, right? That we can get a larger percentage of the population become immune against the virus over a shorter period of time, and we're able to accelerate the time period in which that effective reproductive rate drops to under one. But at the same time, we also want to think to use this opportunity to confer individual protection. We want people that are highly, that are highly susceptible to developing severe disease to be able to gain access to the vaccine and to be protected and at an individual level. Right? And that is probably the most important component of the vaccine, individual person's protection. Right? So if we've got a vaccine, right now, as an example, what we are advocating for is that people that are known to be at high risk of developing severe COVID disease, people over the age of 65, people that are obese, have got hypertension, diabetes, et cetera, we're advocating for those people to remain in self-isolation. And it's not about remaining in self-isolation for the next few weeks. That type of self-isolation might need to continue for up to about two years, right? Which really, really becomes difficult to implement and to, uh, and to get people to buy into that concept. And the only way uh, in a, to basically reduce the time period over which people are needing to be self-isolated is to confer some sort of immunity to them, right? And the way to do that, again, is with the vaccine. So there's a number of vaccines that are currently under development, more than 100 different vaccines. Uh, and of those 100 vaccines, at least five of them have now gone into human trials. And many of them are still in the early phases of human trials, which is where we try to decide what is the optimal dose of the vaccine, how safe it is, and how immunogenic it is, how well the body mounts an immune response against it. Uh, to it. Uh, and, but the one vaccine that is furthest in terms of clinical development is a vaccine that was developed by, developed by the University of Oxford. Uh, and that vaccine is now in what we call phase two studies, which basically means we're looking at safety in a broader population, but at the same time, we're trying to see whether there's any signal as to whether the vaccine actually protects people from developing COVID-19 or not. So the study that is currently underway in uh, the United Kingdom has already enrolled more than 4,000 participants in that particular phase two study. And over the next one or two months, they actually are planning to go into a phase three study, which is sort of a pivotal study, which determines whether the vaccine is actually working to protect against COVID-19. And that study in the United Kingdom will enroll up to 10,000 people. So in total, there'll be about 14,000 people that will have been enrolled in the United Kingdom with this particular vaccine. Uh, the same vaccine is also planned to go into clinical trials in the United States, where they are planning on enrolling as many as 30,000 individuals in the United States. Now, recently what we've been able to do as part of the research unit in South Africa is that uh, with our collaboration with the scientists at Oxford University, uh, we've been able to reach an agreement for them to actually provide us with a vaccine for us to actually see whether the vaccine actually works in the South African population. And that is important for multiple reasons. 
because the past experiences with other vaccines has been that when a vaccine works in one country or one setting, it doesn't necessarily mean that the same would occur in another setting because we've got our own unique circumstances in the African context, which are dissimilar to what might exist in the United Kingdom as an example. So it's critical that we actually understand whether the vaccine works in the local context. Uh, but what we're going to be doing in South Africa is what we call really a phase two study, where we look at safety, but we're also going to be looking at efficacy. And what that basically means is we're going to be determining whether the vaccine protects against COVID-19 or not. Now, the vaccine is not going to cause someone to get infected with the virus. Uh, the chimp ed vaccine that we're going to be evaluating is not a live vaccine. It doesn't replicate in the human body. All that it does is that it's able to actually uh, deliver the protein that is of interest to us to the body to present it to the immune system, and the immune system recognizes it, recognizes it as being foreign and mounts an immune response. It produces what we call antibodies. And those antibodies, if they're circulating, we hope that those antibodies will protect someone from developing severe disease especially. It might not protect someone from getting infected, but it will protect someone from becoming clinically ill, which is the main outcome of interest for us. So when, do, when is it uh, possible that a vaccine might become available to the public? Uh, it's a difficult question, uh, but my best guess right now is probably around about September, October of next year, provided that we actually show that the vaccine works this year. Right? The longer that we delay being able to show that the vaccine actually works, the further it pushes out the timeline when the vaccine would become available. We're doing it in South Africa to find out if the vaccine is safe and efficacious in South Africa so that we adequately equipped with the scientific evidence to promote the use of this vaccine if it is shown to be effective. Right? And that scientific evidence will also be used by the World Health Organization in terms of its recommendations as to whether this vaccine should be used, especially in low middle income countries. So it's critical that we get information from the African context if we want Africans to benefit from COVID vaccines uh, in the near future.